Um, so with that, uh, I um, also given that we're at the end of a long day and a half or so, and that the myriad accomplishments of our next speaker are incredibly well known in this room, I'm going to keep it brief, but I'd also like to ask you to indulge me a little bit here and allow me to share a personal anecdote about how I came to know Inaki Abelos' work. Um, my first exposure to the architecture of Inaki Abelos um, was at the time the firm of Abelos and Herreros. I was a first semester graduate student at Columbia. It was a time when seemingly everything and everything was open for questioning, especially if it could be animated or splined. And Abelos was part of that experimental soup as a visiting professor and a Buell book fellow. Um, but that first semester also coincided with the opening of Terry Riley's um, light construction show at MoMA, an exhibition which included the uh, municipal gym at uh, Simonac Sim Simonacus. Did I pronounce that correctly? Sort of. Um, it, which was a kind of predecessor, less well known, but a kind of predecessor to the well known one in Retiro, um, which was built some 10 years later. Um, now, the way Riley cast, Terry Riley cast the notion of light in light construction was not the way really we've been speaking about it uh, the last two days, but as a kind of aspect of the materiality of glass, its transparency, its lightness as a material construction. I mean, essentially, the, the show and a, a symposium was, uh, that was related was on architecture's skin and its visual effects rather than its performance, per se, uh, that uh, except a kind of atmospheric performance. And, and that really got to a kind of dematerialization rather than I think we've been thinking more about materialization almost. And, and so not so much on this kind of helio-radiated light um, or the potential of the skin to engage it. And yet I would say in those first very few uh, uh, first impressionable weeks of my graduate ed education, um, uh, Abelos lectured on his work, and this is where I'm not so clear. I can't remember whether it was part of that symposium, but I remember seeing it distinctively. I remember being struck uh, by the originally, originality of the work, especially in that context. The projects weren't just the kind of taut glass uh, neo-modernist boxes of many of his light construction compatriots, nor was it the formal experimentation swirling, and I mean literally swirling formally, around the school in its early digital euphoria. Um, what I clearly recall was seeing projects that were informed by their social and urban performance. Um, projects like an urban project for a bandio barra uh, and a dune park. Projects that, like those that Tom Main referenced last night, think far beyond the scope of the site to address problems of the city. I recall projects that focused as much or more on the definition of the problem than, as they did on offering a design solution. Um, presciently, those projects question the nature of urban public spaces. And again, we have to contextualize this as this is like 1995, the balance of ecologies and economies, the protection of natural environments. They question, they ask questions about conservation and tourism, about fragile environments and economic necessity. Um, anticipating and, or really perhaps already engaging a relationship between form, material, and flow. I also recall skins that were as much informed uh, by performance as experience, um, with kind of huge windows, uh, almost the size of gardens, that oversized and kind of improbably cut into low density ho housing. And I think what's so striking is that looking back, those projects uh, serve as precursors to recent ones designed by the office of Abelos and St. Kenwood's. Um, New Kronken Park, the residential housing in Madrid, the train station and park in Lugrano. In retrospect, I guess it's easy to say that the work was far ahead of its time and that light now takes on yet another valence in his work as they imbue that light surface with a performative intelligence through computational tools that connect the facade and the climate. But what, moreover, what I appreciate about the mature work is that those tools are used to think technically they are used to think technically, oh, sorry, that 
while those tools are used to think technically, they are considered just as much for their cultural impact, as can be seen on their recently published tome of a book, Essays on Thermodynamics, Architecture and Beauty. Uh, for those of you who weren't here, or for those of you who were, I'd like to share again a quote by Herbert Simon that Charles read last night, because for me it perfectly captures the way Ablos's office approaches research and practice. The natural, and this is the quote that Charles read last night, the natural sciences are concerned with how things are. Design, on the other hand, is concerned with how the world ought to be. Abelos synthesizes science and design, reducing the distance between how things are and how the world ought to be through technical rigor, formal imagination, and disciplinary integration between architecture, environment, urbanism, and landscape, maintaining the position, and I'm quoting Inyaki here, scientific notions are beautiful. Um, please join me in welcoming Inyaki, uh, Professor of Residence of Architecture, Inyaki Abelos. Thank you so much for this beautiful <coughs> introduction. And thank you, Charles, for your words. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to receive some kind of good comments. <laughs> so <coughs> uh, I'm the last one, no? so oh, it's amazing. <laughs> you have resisted. Uh, this is what I wrote uh, uh, when I, I think it was Sergio or Danny. Uh, uh, um, wrote me about uh, making a, a, a small introduction. I said that uh, I was interested in this idea of the false friends were in relationship with heliomorphisms in the sense that sometimes same solutions are uh, used for completely different uh, things, climates, programs, uh, scales, <clears throat> and that uh, there's always this. There's something always present, which is this kind of, of combination or orchestration of, of matter flow and form. And there is also uh, this last paragraph. The most interesting cases of heliomorphism happen when architecture meets urban design and when palaces meet uh, simple or primitive huts. So. Well, the simple uh, laboratories of, of small buildings can <coughs> open uh, other scales projects. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to be too technical. I, I just want to say that uh, this is the radiation, the spectrum, everyone knows it. But it's one of the reasons why we used to find some false friends in, 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 in our profession is, is because sometimes we want to have the light, someone, sometimes we want to have the heat, sometimes we don't have, want to have any, sometimes we want to have both. And, and for these very simple operations, like rotation, for example, uh, change completely the behavior of, of, of uh, a building. And there is uh, another component. No? There is no any, any kind of interchange uh, of flow if there is not a source and a sink. And the source is obviously the sun, and the sink uses to be uh, normally the earth. The Earth is massive, and 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 but the Earth at night uh, is the heated uh, body, and as Salman always say, it, it uh, radiates back to the sky dome, and depending on the this always depends on the clarity of the night. So clouds are very important in the equation, and are also um, <clears throat> uh, uh, and it's also the the movement of air. I mean, when it's heated, it goes up. When it's cold, it's good it goes down. It's very simple. This is called buoyancy, as everyone knows. But these uh, three aspects, the sun, the earth, and, and the <clears throat> atmosphere, I think that are the, the elements that we have as architects to really try to create some organisms that uh, perform as alive entities, that really try to maximize the benefits of climate, uh, etc. I'm going to, to present, well, then there is the climate, obviously. And, um, we can talk about uh, different climates, the Koppengeiger, uh, which is the consequence, the consequence of all these ingredients. But uh, I'm, I'm going to present a couple of, of, of false friends in, in a small scale, scale made some years ago, very similar to the, those projects uh, Ashley was commenting in the in the first years of uh, Avalos Herreros. This is a studio of a uh, well-known artist in Madrid, 
<coughs> who uh, uh, want, didn't want to have air conditioning, uh, any kind of HVAC, any kind of ra radiator. It was 100% uh, had to be passive, cheap, uh, obviously, etc. And, and we uh, we proposed this thing, which looks like being uh, relatively. Um, how, how can I go back? Ah, here, uh, yeah. uh, relatively translucent to, uh, to avoid to, to look too opaque, but in reality what you have as, as windows are only the skylights and three places where the light and the air enters. The main thing here is that the, to, to, to get this thing done, uh, the, the building is mainly sunken in the earth, <clears throat> no, uh, no geothermal, just sunken in, in the earth, and is uh, uh, wrapped in very thick uh, concrete walls and a uh, green roof uh, with the skylights. Uh, the skylights are made of the cheapest material, the double layer of, of uh, corrugated polycarbonate that, that diffracts and refracts the light so you don't have uh, any kind of, uh, of, of direct uh, sunrise. But you have the homogeneity of light in the walls, which was the obsession of the painter, uh, <clears throat> gotten with, with the most cheap material you can ever have. And on top of this, you have a sky, uh, the skylights that are uh, super simple, the, uh, the doors and the two doors and windows that uh, enter the air, and the skylights uh, are open, are operable, and can open in summer, and are open normally in summer, and are closed in, in winter. This is the real estate of the thing. And here you have the, the roof. The roof is, is green. I have to say that the only place where green roofs work really well is in the Mediterranean climate, where, which is the only climate that is dry in summer. So the, it really isolates you from the sunrise. In, in other places, with the monsoon, etc., it's exactly the opposite. So, so it's it's wonderful to to work in Spain with green roofs. Um, <clears throat> here are the skylights, and you see some some parts that are removable. And then we go to a different climate with another studio for another artist in, in Switzerland in a part that has only two months without snow, <coughs> close to St. Gallen. And in this case, the, the climate is, is quite different. Uh, well, I'm not going to bore you with the definitions that are not so accurate, by the way, the Copenhagen, anyway. And, uh, <laughs> and you see, the, it's, it's very similar. In this case, super cold, long winters, etc. The, uh, the, 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 the thing is exactly the same. So we have a slope instead of a flatland, so we have to sunken it as much as possible to, to maximize the inertia of, of the slope of the earth. <clears throat> we construct uh, partially in concrete and the rest in wood instead of in steel, which is a much better material to, for, for this climate. And we have two skylights. <coughs> Um, um, it's white just because of the snow. It's very obvious. <laughs> and and the, the funny thing is that in this case, the, the skylights are directly the, oriented to, to the sun, to the south, in order to maximize light, and just with lattices that are reflective. So if there is a sunrise that is direct, you have just to remove it, and it's with a small motor, and, and that's it. So, and this is the, the, the interior that is made in, 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 in wood, and this guy is always uh, hearing music, so he has some acoustic also in wood, some acoustic ceiling, and the, the, the lights. Uh, again, we have like a, a very like random or chaotic place, but not so chaotic, in this case is much, much more careful, but this is the south window, which is, uh, again, the need of natural light to, to really understand color. I mean, every artist I know needs natural light. I mean, I don't know why museums are so much, like, were so much as black boxes. It's changing, obviously. And in, in this case, it has a terrace uh, over a nice valley. Uh, some details here of the uh, wood. The wood is very basic. It's industrial wood painted in white and, and the skylights. So mostly <clears throat> in this case, um, I forgot to say, we use geothermal energy. I mean, there are some, some, some holes, et cetera, et cetera, some circuit in the floor to heat. And, and also we are using uh, <clears throat> the snow as an insulation instead of a green roof. So, so things are similar, but, but responses are completely uh, uh, 
I mean, this box could have been in Madrid and the other in, in with very few changes in, in, in Switzerland. And this is something that we made with, with Salman precisely. Another uh, a studio and uh, a small apartment for for uh, the same artist in, in a house, uh, as extension of a house that has 250 years and he has been living in. This is a beautiful wood house uh, oriented to the southeast. And you see the scale of, of, uh, of the person in the section, in the second section, compared to the scale of the height uh, of, the fr of, of the floors of the old house. In the old house, it's, it's, a, it's a thermal engine again, made of wood oriented to the sun, but they needed to confine as much as possible the volume of air because it was, I mean, uh, something precious that, that they had to, to preserve. So, and this, and this person, which is really high, uh, was after, I don't know, living four or five years, couldn't be all, all day making this to go out or in a room. So he wanted volume. He wanted volume. So we, we, the, the idea was uh, to, to, to work exactly as if we were uh, traditional uh, um, uh, architects or master builders of the, of the area, but with the new materials. So we could use aerated concrete. We could use all the knowledge of, 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 of thermodynamics, geothermia, and also a pure orientation to the south and buoyancy in, in summer to create <coughs> a kind of, uh, to, to, to really uh, heat in winter and ventilate in summer this uh, volume of, 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 of uh, volume of spaces that uh, he was uh, aiming for. This is a little bit the monster that we created that uh, at the same time was uh, able to adapt uh, radically to all the historic regulations on roofs, pitched roofs, uh, heights, etc., etc. believe me or not, uh, that they had in this small uh, village. And the uh, slight cut, I mean, the, cut, the vertical window is the one that is in charge of, of, of a kind of, of, of uh, uh, negotiating buoyancy with the skylights while the big uh, window to the south is, is, is for the summer, for the winter heat. We changed, I mean, uh, a few years later, we liked the scheme, so it's a prototype of other things. And this is the last iteration of the same scheme, but it's moved to Buenos Aires, good airs, I mean, a completely different climate, uh, the most, uh, I mean, if a city is called, uh, Gooders, uh, it means something, no? literally. In terms of thermodynamics, you don't have to think too much. And, uh, and this is the, an extension of, it's a school of architecture. Uh, the, it was a factory, the building you see in the right, and this is the extension with, with spaces, big spaces that the columns of the factory didn't allow for in the, in the old building. And, well, Buenos Aires. <laughs> Good places in the world. It's, I like to see the Copenhagen because you can you can immediately uh, have the flavor of the sites as comparing to the places you know well. No? Well, this was very th close to the River Plate Stadium uh, and, and to the river, and and this is the reality. I mean, as as, as Camilo has pointed out, uh, uh, public space in, in Latin America is for cars mainly, and <laughs> and they heat a lot the area and also the concrete. So so it's but it's the business that that maintains the university. So it was one of the issues of the equation, no? how to deal with this. And this is the guy, Torquato di Tella, that was an inventor of, of cars, fridges, and uh, factory man. And so in a way for us, it was very clear that we had to maintain the spirit through using some of the codes of the old uh, factories as the roof and, the, the, and uh, another, another factory, <laughs> factory of good architects <laughs> and uh, landscapers <laughs> that Charles is here. <laughs> Uh, but you see, the, 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 the environment is a little bit different. It's green. Well, it's, this is hardware. And this is the, the scheme uh, of, of the thing. It was like uh, orienting again the skylights to the south, which is the equivalent to the north, uh, because we are in the other side of the world. So no direct sunlight and uh, maximizing uh, buoyancy to try to uh, uh, make almost 100% passive 
in the whole building. The whole building is a mix because they wanted offices, they wanted to be renting some offices while they were growing to get some return of the money, complete chaos. Anyway, this is it. Well, <clears throat> so there are some some aspects. I mean, we are always used. We we have become used to to, to these tables, which at the, at, the, at the first time seem too dry, and then you discover that they give you a lot of information about the, the use of geothermal uh, in this in, in 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 some places. In this one in particular, the psychrometric, which is really very useful, is not complete, but is very useful. And then the the, the sun inclination in summer winter that that give us some some clues on how to orient our our engine our um, <coughs> monster in this case which is a mix of, of, of a cube and some kind of <coughs> cuts and, and and orientations so we maxima maximize the uh, north oriented uh, volumes uh, porticos to avoid too much sun in uh, and for the rain in Buenos Aires you have a lot of rain and <coughs> and they didn't have any place for rain and and green uh, instead of roof, which is not the most mm, wonderful place. Uh, they have this roof. It's a beautiful roof, by the way. But we wanted to get it down to the street life. So, so we were stepping down uh, the, the, the gardens. No? Uh, these are sections that, I'm, I'm, well, you see here how the, the, the stair, one of the two stairs is, is a kind of chimney also that, that drives the air uh, through to, to the skylights. Let me go quick. Um, the porticos, the, the, the elevators, and, and the connection with the all and the, and, and the roof. Um, uh, some of the plants that these are very intensive, uh, very compact, and, and, and have this kind of possible offices like like free plan or the typical cell of the we have here for the, all the instructors and all the faculty. No? Like it's like a little prison <laughs> and the studio which is, uh, uh, well, this is the office space, and, and this is the studio that reminds a little bit something that is familiar for all of you. And, but it's smaller, obviously. And see the, the, the ceiling here is concrete. Uh, I will explain it later. <clears throat> so we are trying to expose all the concrete surfaces to, to radiate with water pipes uh, uh, to equilibrate the, the, the conditions. The interior conditions. Oh, I like these this images <laughs> of the model. And this is almost identical, this image, to the a small uh, house in, in Switzerland. And, uh, well, this is the scheme. I mean, the idea is to, to approach, you see in the left down, the graphic of comfort and the temperatures. And we are trying through different energies to approach more and more to the uh, comfort zone. Uh, this is uh, very simple, it's uh, buoyancy. Uh, and uh, this is using the thermal mass uh, and, and the pipes inside it to, to equilibrate a little bit more. And, and at night, you, you can take out the, the heat, uh, not only from the air, but also from the mass of the, of the, of the building. Um, uh, <coughs> and uh, geothermal with the help of a heat Bomb, uh, bomb uh, that that uh, allow us to really uh, find finally the comfort zone. No? This is, I could be or Salman should be much more time uh, explaining this, but I think that the, the idea is very clear. Three or four uh, strategies that are approaching us to the comfort zone and ventilating the the structure. Uh, the corrugation of the exactly what I wanted to show is the corrugation of the floor to maximize radiation, but also to uh, create a kind of absorption of the sound. Uh, and this is an image of the kind of things that uh, we can do nowadays when we say a slab of concrete. It's a slab of ho hollow slab of, of installations of all kind. And this is uh, what we uh, wanted to use, a very simple thing, the one of the most cheap materials that can help you to absorb the sound. And the image of this, this space in the street that is a little bit sunken, but allow you to have a kind of semi-private space for the students. And this window is the only window to the south, but it's good to have a window to the south, and it's also good to have a window to the River Plate Stadium, so they can enjoy soccer. 
And this is a, another project that is, again, is a university, is a campus in a completely different climate. Uh, and it's more a kind of urban scale project. This project is in China. Uh, we won the competition, but it will never happen because it was too, too modernist for the new normal of the, the actual situation for some governors of provinces if this happens. Uh, anyway, it was based in, in very much in the, in the monastery scheme. I mean, so uh, the library instead of the church is, is, is the crown of, 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 of all the spaces, and the spaces are... Uh, well, it's cold in winter and hot and, 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 and humid in summer, so, but especially it's cold in winter because there are strong north winds. So the whole thing, instead of coming from a kind of, of uh, traditional typology, comes from this idea of wrapping uh, volumes and spaces, cloisters, so, uh, uh, and, and so to create a kind of organization in three cloisters or patios or couriers, whatever you can call them, that are connected and at, at different levels. The last one is residential, the first one is the facilities, and the medium is the classes and the library and other services. Um, this is the image. It's made in concrete. I mean, the only thing you have in the landscape are pines and sand. So we decided to use wood and concrete. I mean, so it's not that, that difficult to choose. No? And no one can tell you anything about using these materials. And the egress stair uh, is, is composing a kind of, of, of path to the roof, which is a kind of beautiful observatory uh, of the landscape. It's tuned very close to the sea. Um, this is important because we were cutting these uh, balconies or whatever you call gardens, if you want, in ways that allowed us to deform the structure to get this done. Uh, so we were studying the perforation, the relationship among opaque and, and transparent facade in, in relationship with the orientation in order to get a kind of homogeneity of natural light. So at the same time, you are managing, uh, uh, let's say, Radiation, you are managing natural light and trying to establish uh, a good balance. I mean, maybe it's not perfect, but at least you are doing all you can with, with form, structure, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but to, to get a, a, a something close to the equilibrium. If you have a good physical analysis of the building, you can go beyond this, no? but this is a competition. You just use the rules of thumb. No? This is, you see here, the materials. Uh, this is the dorms part, the last uh, courtyard, <coughs> the, 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 the balconies, the roof desk, and the uh, pines that are not pines because the renderies are the renderies. And <laughs> this happens. And, and these are the schemes. Uh, you see here the plans. I, I like the organization, frankly. I mean, it was a pity that it couldn't be built uh, because it, it, I think it's, it's smart and, and easy to use and in winter and in summer. No? <coughs> and this is the last one. Uh, uh, so I will not explain too much because Camilo has uh, made a wonderful uh, pa panoramic vision of the climate and the resources that you can use in Medellin. Uh, but this is a project that we have been involved in this last year, and we are very we have a lot of illusion to to to, be, to make it real. Uh, this is Medellin, Eternal Spring, etc., uh, and and the valley, the beautiful valley uh, that uh, drives the winds. Uh, and uh, in the south of the, the the historic center, there is this huge space. The other uh, yellow. Uh, rectangular shape is the cathedral and the grid of the Spanish, uh, let's say, uh, intervention. Um, this was the result of a competition, typical architecture of the 70s, 80s, uh, post-Rossi, uh, monumental, uh, um, and in a way, in landing in a place like a, I mean, I, I don't want to criticize because it was a good example for these years. I mean, and all of us were in those days more in in figure and form than in performance, as, as using your words, Aslim. And, and so, uh, and it was a, a great effort uh, for the municipality to do this. No? And, but the reality is that it's insecure. It, it's, uh, no one uses. I mean, you will never see people there. And the reasons that were explained very well by Camilo. <laughs> and, uh, but the, the site is incredible. It's, it's in the only cross of the two lines of the metro uh, in the market, connected to, 
to the all the area of the offices of the administration. So, so the French Lycée and the French Alliance is there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So these are the drawings, and the reason is very clear: is there in the middle of the sections the the, the car park, as always, the car park, and like in so many in Spain, in Madrid, again in many other places, is the is is killing public space. No? And but not on, only this, also the fact that they are not connected with the topography of of the site. They wanted to maintain a, a, an abstract, a pure. Uh, horizontal plane and is far away from from the reality of of the urban life. Well, sun, every uh, you you have sun in every corner, <laughs> night and day. Beautiful weather, always inside the comfort zone. Winds that are very very not not very heavy at all, very slow, but but have an effect in the public space. Steady in that direction. And pollution, another ingredient. If you want to work with with natural ventilation, pollution, you have to filtrate. You have to so nothing is perfect, and and natural ventilation has also some problems in urban areas. Well, these are <coughs> again psychrometric charts, and this is uh, Camilo on top to the left, and the rest of the public spaces uh, that we visit and and enjoy, and are full of people because they have this green canopy. Uh, and this is this is the conclusion. No? Uh, is the radiation here is 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 impossible, and um, and the fact that it's the un, 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 unconnected creates insecurity. Topographically unconnected, is, it creates a lot of insecurity. No, no one passes through at night, even during the day, and and the the retail space is is empty. No one wants to buy anything. If, if you have the market in front and you can go without the steps, why should you go up, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So, so and they want. I mean, it's a the only public space the municipality has in the center of the city. So they wanted to create a kind of oper urban operation that changes the character. At the same time, it was incredibly well built. This is the car park, which has the heights of of, of three six uh, something like this. So, so it's, it's amazingly uh, possible to use it for other activities and well constructed. So the, our first thing was to recover. Our, our first idea was to recover the topography to avoid insecurity. And if, if we just try to remove uh, uh, the the earth uh, and and there's a kind of of of, of uh, uh, like an iceberg. Something goes out a little bit bigger than this, but it can be. So so we just destroy thirty between twenty five or thirty percent of the surface of the car park, and we obtain a pavilion and a smooth three percent slope uh, public space. The second thing with Teresa Galli that was around is today around uh, the landscaper. Uh, uh, she made this amazing taxonomy of uh, different uh, uh, trees of, of 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 the area. That that is, is looks naive, but is uh, hyper scientific and explains everything about the size, the fruits, uh, the form, structure, architectural structure of the different. Uh, <clears throat> And then we began to think that with this canopy we could construct uh, shapes. We can construct rooms, just changing and making a mix of of of, of trees. And then there is the the direction of the uh, air in the public space and the pollution. Uh, the, the the yellow brown comes from the streets that have a high level of traffic. So so in a way it's a good wind, but it's a bad polluted air. So we had to, well, the other comes in from a much more normal thing. So we went, began to check the, with these uh, banal drawings how to allow for the public space to maximize the flow of natural air and to avoid as much as possible as creating some kind of parapet in the first two, three floors. Uh, from the west to allow the the air at least come clean and then with the canopy of trees make it down make it go down so this is basically the before and after that we were dealing so these pentagons are trying to avoid turbulence at the same time are trying to avoid 
angles to that are unsecure. The open angle is always secure for the people because you see, you, you, have, you are alert and you know if there is someone in the other side just wanting to take your wallet. And this is the section. You see the iceberg going up and, uh, the, 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 and, the, and the structure. One side offices with a podium, which is the left side, and the other is small almost the same scale than the, the environment around uh, small residential units. So we were populating the place, we were integrating in the urban life and increasing the, the let's say, the accessibility from the market, avoiding any step and, and avoiding strange angles and creating a barrier for the sound and the pollution, chemical pollution making a canopy to allow to download the air refreshed by the trees <clears throat> and establishing a kind of communal center. The, the residential uh, pentagons are made of two bedroom dorms that uh, in the blue arrows just pass through the natural air in the public space and they are uh, using buoyancy and very simple, I mean, it's, as, as Camilo has pointed out, you don't need any layer of insulation, you need a porous material and that's it. It's very simple and very beautiful. They collect also the water. so. <clears throat> And the office space is different, is oriented exactly is north and south, the facades, and it's elongated is west. So uh, at the same time that it allows the, the wind to enter into the space is uh, with a little cantilever in both sides. You are having natural light, it's 12 meters thick, so both sides have enough natural light. You, you can cross ventilate or you can just, through buoyancy and chimneys, uh, get uh, and then the whole space uh, uh, renovated with air, fresh air. Um, and this is uh, the views, the, the, the orientation of the slabs uh, are preserving the views on the mountains. So the, all these elements, I mean, I'm trying to describe a kind of performative urbanism that doesn't forget form or that uses form to, to make it more uh, easy for everyone, for the public space, for the buildings and, and different programs to, to work together and to simplify things, to simplify things. This is the crazy garden uh, <laughs> and that is full of, 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 of it's a jungle, uh, basically, and this is the, the way that the whole form is organized. We are using the car park for the residential units. We have another new car park for the new slabs of office space. We are preserving several buildings that are interesting and, and are already there. And we are pivoting the public space on, on this pavilion for, uh, it's still to be decided if it's for craftsmanship or if it's for flowers, it's a mix of that, it's restoration, like gastronomy. Uh, there are a couple of, of, of possibilities. <coughs> Uh, like close view, close view, <laughs> flows, and some images of the, uh, the the church, the Botero sculptors here and there that are interesting and important for the city, the green stuff, the trees, the pentagons, the slabs, and a kind of completely different um, Space, I think, green with canopies, secure with the residents and, and mixed use, as the rest of the programs I have been trying to bring today here. That's it. Thank you very much. That was very generous. Thank you so much. Thank you, Inyaki, um, for that closing keynote. Thanks to all of you, all of our speakers, uh, all of our hosts. Uh, thanks to Helen Kongsgaard and the uh, research staff in the office. Thanks to my co-conspirators, Danny Ibanez, uh, Sergio Lopez Nero. Thanks very much. Uh, for all of you, this is precisely the kind of conversation that we want to convene, the kind of projects we want to do with you. Uh, the office is really your office. It's the school's office. I want to mention just in closing, um, uh, we're using this as an opportunity these two days to also roll out the identity for the office. This is the work of uh, Michael Rock and uh, Two by Four, who are our identity and communication partners. We've also engaged with uh, Eric Roddenbeck uh, Stamen out of San Francisco as our cartography mapping partners. And we are now using uh, this opportunity also to launch our uh, website. So stay tuned, we'll be in touch, and thanks again. Thank you.